Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sovar, also known as Parker Bidigiri, and today we're going to go over, let me see, input and controls. We're going to go over edit boxes, buttons, joysticks, and text. So, right now, um, from the previous tutorials, you understand what the set window title, set window size, set virtual resolution, I believe you know what the orientation is. If you do not remember what that is, I don't know if I actually went over this. It basically allows um, whichever mobile device you're using, uh, which way to rotate the screen when you tilt it. Like, for example, landscape versus portrait. I believe if I... Here. You can see that the integer portrait, integer portrait 2, which would be upside down, integer a landscape which would be I think on the right side and integer landscape 2 would be on the left side of the phone. So that's basically what set orientation allowed means. So now we understand what a global variable is and I created an edit underscore box as the integer for the identification number of an you know, identification number of the edit box or at least the second one. So in order to create an edit box, you need to do create edit box with parentheses with the identification number. Or as a second way you can do it, you can just simply have it dynamically add the identification number. You again use this identification number similar to how the sprites work to set different variables. For example, set edit box visible with a zero at the end would make it invisible while having a one would make it visible. Of course, this is for the second text box, and I'll show you later how it all works. Okay, so we have our first text box, which is going to be our primary, primary bleh, I can't talk today, um, main one. They call it edit box, but I'm just going to go, I am just going to call it a text box. So set edit, well, I guess I'll call it edit box. Set edit box position would be the X and the Y coordinates of the edit box according to the ID number, which is one. And of course we set the edit box here as one. And then you can set the edit box text by saying the identification number of the edit box along with the message you want to put in it. And we also have the set edit box text size. This actually edits the uh, actual text size within the edit box. You can do it as like uh, 1 to 32 to 200 or whatever size you prefer. Of course you always want to try to do it half the size of the actual height of the edit box. As you can see 32 is double the size. Of course the uh, set edit box size would be the width and the height. Of course with the identification number of 1. So that's a basic understanding of all the different attributes and different functions of the edit box. Now we're going to explain the basics of the virtual button, which I believe I already went over it, but I'm going to go over it again, along with the virtual joystick. So add virtual button adds a virtual button to the actual screen or video game. Now, of course, this is the identification number. This is the X coordinate, and this is the Y coordinate, along with the size. The size of the button basically is the... Like, um, uh, it's a square, so it would be the width and the height of 100 pixels or whatever units this is. Of course, this is the X position, Y position. So the joystick is basically the exact same thing, but it's a joystick. So you have the X and the Y and the size. Of course, with the identification number of 1. <clears throat> so here we set a global variable TXT, which is an integer. This TXT is for creating text, which is a, um, it is not like how the print works. Print, you can, uh, you have to consistently go through the command print to have it show up on the screen. Create text is basically similar to a sprite, but purely text. And it can be placed anywhere in the screen with all these different attributes you can change on it. For example, the set text size, of course with the TXT identification number, with the size of 14, or the font size of 14. And then the set text position with the TXT identification number, the actual X position and the Y position, 
And of course, uh, we already explained what print C and print commands are, so I'm not going to go over that again. But uh, we have the joystick X position and this joystick Y. Uh, this is not the, I'm sorry, this is not the actual position of where you place the joystick, but it's the actual values you're returning from the movement of the joystick. And I'll show you that in the example shortly. And also, when you actually press the button, which I do use uh, get virtual button state, of course, with the identification number, as in one, as we have, if I could find it, where did I put it? Oh, yeah, right here. So when that state is equal to one, meaning I pressed it, it will go to sleep for a little bit because uh, for some reason there is not enough delay, so this comes up two times. But there's a function called message. Now, message is uh, basically a pop-up system, and it will actually give us the message that is in the edit box using the command get edit box text, which of course the identification number of the first edit box. So when the buttons press, sleep for 200 milliseconds, which is also a delay, and then have a pop-up of whatever's in the edit box. And then, of course, we have the print, screen, frames per second, and the sync, which the sync updates everything. And all into the main loop. So we are going to compile. Everything's compiled just fine. And run. So as you can see here, we have the title of tutorial underscore three. We have the joystick X and the joystick Y, similar as presented with the print C and the print. Of course, it is zero because we haven't done anything with the actual joystick. <clears throat> Here's the frames per second right here being printed, along with the actual first edit box with the this is text box one. As you can see right here, this is text box one. And we have the pop-up edit box text, which is the actual text that we created with the identification number of TXT. And then the actual virtual button, which is the first virtual button. And when we press this, it is supposed to give us a pop-up of what it says in here. So let's try it out. As you can see, the actual message started, and it says this is text box 1, um, and it matches what's ever in the text box. And it also freezes the program in the background, so it's sort of bit like this would be good for error report which we'll probably get in later on, but um, it ultimately just gives you a message. You just click OK, and then the, oops, ah, I didn't put my delay long enough. That's why it does two messages instead of just one. But as soon as you're done with the message, the video game or whatever program you have running goes back to normal. So now let's do the joystick, and I believe this would conclude the tutorial. So when we move the joystick, oops, as you can see, when we move it up, it is a negative variable for the y-axis. Move it down, and it's a positive for the y-axis. And then when we move it to the right, uh, it is the positive for the x-axis and negative for the x-axis on the other side. And when you unclick, it automatically goes into the center. So that is how the joystick works, and overall, just some basic input commands and buttons and joysticks and all that stuff. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I'm going to go over some more input devices with some raw key inputs, text inputs, and other tutorials. I am also going to be going over advertisements and in-app purchases, along with 3D objects, shaders, multiplayer, all sorts of things. So stay tuned for more tutorials. Thank you for watching. Like the video and subscribe to my channel. And this is Mr. Sovar, and thank you for watching.